Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as 1, 2, 3. Through this video, we are going to discuss about distance time graph for various types of motion. As we know that, uh, that there are different types of motion, say uniform motion, non-uniform motion, object moving faster, slowing down, moving with acceleration, without acceleration. Sometimes the object doesn't move at all. We say that the object is at rest. All these situations can be expressed graphically by using certain geometrical shapes. Let's see what is distance time graph through this video. As you know that when you are traveling in a car, sometimes you move really faster. Sometimes you have to slow down. Sometimes you have to take a halt. You have to stop the car. All these might happen in a single journey, right? So all these can be expressed graphically by using simple geometric shapes. See, for example, if an object is moving, you can draw a straight line which is having an angle with the x-axis. Or if the object is at rest, you can draw another straight line, which is parallel to the time axis. So from the distance time graph, we can know so many informations about the graph, about the motion of the object, right? So what is the significance of distance time graph? It is nothing but the geometrical relationship between distance traveled by a body it within a given time. For drawing a distance time graph, we'll be marking time along the x-axis and distance along the y-axis. Uniform motion is represented by a straight line, which is having an angle. Rest means it is parallel to the time axis and non-uniform motion will be represented by using a curved path. We will be discussing in detail about these. Let's look at the graphical representation of an object at rest. Object at rest means shape of the graph will be parallel to the time axis, which means distance remains fixed over a long time interval. Or if the object is undergoing uniform motion, it will be having a straight line, making an angle with the time axis, which means the object is covering equal distances during equal intervals of time. Whereas a non-uniform motion can be represented by using a curved graph as is shown here. In this case, if you measure the distances in equal intervals of time, you can see that it is not going to be equal, right? Distance in equal intervals of time is going to be different here, which means this graph represents a non-uniform motion. Now let's see what are the mathematical calculations you can do from a distance time graph and which all informations we can draw by knowing a distance time graph. For that, let us draw a real time graph by taking certain fixed values. Say for example, we are going to talk about the journey of a car from the initial position zero from the initial time zero to a final position 16 meter at the end of 10 seconds. In between, sometimes it was not moving, sometimes it might be speeding up, sometimes it might be slowing down. We don't know what exactly happened to the object, right? For that, let us plot this graph. I hope everybody know how to plot a graph. You might, you all might have studied that in maths, right? Plotting a graph, it is very simple. You have to mark the values on the X and Y axis. Here, I'm taking time along the X axis and distance along the Y axis. Corresponding values are marked. And by plotting corresponding points, we can draw a graph. So this is going to be the shape of the graph for this given data. Now, from the distance time graph, it is easy to calculate the speed of an object. Speed of an object is nothing but the slope of distance time graph. Slope means y by x for any kind of graph. Slope of the graph means value taken along the y axis divided by value taken along the x axis. So from the distance time graph, we can find out one information. It is about the speed of the object, slope of distance time graph, 
will give you speed of the object. Let's calculate speed of this particular object at different intervals of time. For that, I'm going to split this graph into three different parts. As you can see, the graph is not going to have a continuous straight path, right? It is. It can be easily converted into three different parts. Let's find out speed at these different intervals. Let us take the interval of time between zero to four. For, that, for finding the slope, you have to draw yx portions. And then slope means y by x. Here, y value is starting from 0 to 0.8. Means y value is 8 meter. And along the x-axis, you have the points 0 and 4. So along the x-axis, the value is going to be 4. So v is equal to s by t equal to 8 by 4 equal to 2 meter per second. So this is the speed of this car during the interval of time 0 to 4 seconds. Let's find out the speed of the same car at a different interval of time, say from 8 to 10 seconds. It is represented by the green colored graph. You can see the starting of this observation is from this point to this point. So along the y-axis, you have the interval between 16 and 8 meter, which means y value of this particular graph is going to be 8. And x value is between 8 and 10, which means it's going to be 2, right? So the speed of that particular portion of the graph is going to be 8 by 2 equal to 4 meter per second. Let's find out the speed of another portion of the graph. There is one more portion. Here, as you can see, there is no variation in the y direction. It is starting with 8 meter, and at the end also, it is at the same position, 8 meter, which means y value is 0. Therefore, speed will be 0 by 4 equal to 0 meter per second. So we came to know certain points from this. That is, if the graph is having a parallel line with the time axis, which means its speed is zero. If it is having an angle with the x axis, it is having a specific value of speed. And then one more thing you can draw from here is, if suppose there are two graphs, object, two objects, distance time graph is plotted along the same graph. Say this is object A and this is object B. Both of them are having constant speed. Both of them are moving away from the reference point. But A is making a greater angle than the object B, which implies object A is moving faster than B. So this is one importance of studying distance time graph. By looking at the graphs, we will be able to, even though any numbers are not given, no numbers are given here, right? Just a graph shape is given, but from that itself, you will be able to analyze and differentiate between the speed of both these objects. Let's see different types of distance time graph and let's have a quick analysis of what different shapes indicates. First one is this, as you can see, it is having a constant speed and moving away from the reference point because at the beginning it is at zero distance but at the end of five seconds it has reached a distance 12 meter which means the object is moving away from the reference point second graph at the starting that is when time is zero position of the object was 20 but as time passes at the end of three seconds it is coming to distance zero which means this also represents a constant speed, but object is moving closer to the reference point. And one more thing you can understand from this is comparing to graph one and two, graph two is having a greater slope, which means the second curve represents an object moving faster. Let's look into the third graph, distance time graph, which is parallel to the time axis, which means no speed, which means the object is not moving at all, right? It is representing object at rest. So all these discussions can be concluded into five simple forms, okay? These are the things you have to keep in your memory stack. Let's see what are the things you have to keep in your memory stack. 
one graph one its shape is this and the points about this graph is distance is not changing which means the object is at rest which means speed and acceleration will be zero the second graph is this its analysis is object is moving away from the reference point with a constant speed speed is constant means acceleration will be zero third graph is this similar observation only one difference that the object is moving closer to the reference point but constant speed constant speed means acceleration will be zero let's see what is going to be the distance time graph shape for non-uniform motion here you can see as the time passes the value of distance is increasing but it's not a stepwise increase it is increasing drastically right the distance is becoming larger and larger with each second which means it is representing a non-uniform motion speed is increasing increasing speed means positive acceleration next graph is this here distance is decreasing as time passes but the decrease is drastic which means the distance is getting smaller and smaller with each second it is representing a decrease in speed which means a negative acceleration hope it is very clear and useful to all of you for all the types of motion distance time graph can be plotted or if the distance time graph is given to you you will be able to analyze the graph and say the type of motion the nature of speed or the nature of acceleration hope today's session was very helpful to all of you thank you for watching keep watching and subscribe to get more content. Thank you.